Okay, so uh, hello, I'm Anaisa. I'm uh, with ACB, as Bobby uh, mentioned, for uh, the migration, and that's what we will look into today. So I think we can start. This is one slide I think we've uh, presented many times. It's our journey in the migration, how this will uh, go from now until the Goliath, how we prepared for having an ECMS um, in the operational phase. Um, the journey is known by all of you. We have the different steps. We started with the submission of the registration forms to your NCBs, uh, and we are now in the connectivity phase. Um, so the step two out of seven that we that we have to to, to realize in order to to get to the go live. Um, and this connectivity finishes today. And the next steps we will have, which is the step three, four, and five, are a bit of our pre-migration is all uh, regarding the setup of reference data. And then the last two steps, the preparation week and the migration weekend, uh, it's more uh, related to the ECMS and the transactional data, as well as connectivity to other systems. Um, so the preparation week is, um, is uh, it's the two weeks before the migration weekend and then on the migration weekend is really when we would uh, migrate all of the positions um, on the different types of uh, collateral and credit prepare the pools and uh, prepare the system for go live for monday uh, where you would start your activities with ecms so we are on step two and i think on the the next slide we have a bit of this step two so this is the connectivity uh, we started on the 2nd of April, the phase, uh, as it was uh, planned. Uh, the green light to the counterparties was provided by the NCBs uh, throughout the second half of May uh, by each NCB at the national level. So this uh, depending, um, was, um, sorry, depending on when the NCB was uh, finished with the setting up of the counterparty. Um, what was expected of the counterparties was that you would test your U2A and your A2A connectivity, the U2A connectivity via the administrator user created by the NCB for the counterparty, and this based on the information you provided in your registration form, and the A2A connectivity via the A2A users that the administrator, so your user administrator of your counterparty creates for, um, for your uh, entity. Uh, the eight-way connectivity, as Bobby mentioned, is uh, not mandatory. It depends on your business case. If you will use eight-way connectivity in prod, then uh, you should definitely test it. Otherwise, uh, you are not required to test it. In case you're facing issues still with this, as Bobby mentioned, please reach out to your uh, ECMS National Service Desk. Uh, provide them all of the details of the situation, and then uh, they will uh, investigate the problem and uh, if needed, require the support of the ECMS service desk. Uh, sometimes it can be also an issue with the NSP. So please also check that uh, all of the steps you needed to do with, with your NSP are correct, that you made the correct CGU subscriptions. We saw this a bit in the past, that there were some issues with some of the CGU subscriptions that were uh, requested by the actors and they had it to be corrected. So please also check this. Um, otherwise, uh, please also check that you created the A2A user, you corrected the DN correctly according to the definitions of the ECMS. There is a specific way to create a DN and um, yeah, try to, to make sure all of this is done correctly. If still it seems that is correct, then reach out to your service tests. Um, the phase ends today, uh, 21st of June. And um, so in this case, we know that uh, the connectivity is not yet reached for all of the actors, namely in case of the counterparties. Um, so we would advise you to do this uh, as soon as possible if you have not done it yet, because the phase is concluded today. Um, and uh, most importantly, between the 2nd of August and the 26th of September, um, there will be no possibility to test the connectivity because we will be in the pre-migration activities. So if you have not accomplished it yet, uh, please do so as fast as, as possible. If you have issues that you are not able to solve through, reach out to your service desk. 
Okay, if we can uh, go to the next slide. Uh, so in the journey that you saw before, nothing much changed. The journey is still the same, but there are some details that we would like to inform you. So it's some updates to the migration process, so finer details uh, that um, are relevant for you as a counterparty. Uh, so first important thing to notice is uh, we will perform a deactivation of the counterparty users. Um, during the pre-migration phase, but also during the preparation week uh, phases, uh, up to the migration weekend activities being finished, this will be done. Uh, so we will inactivate you at the start of the pre-migration phase, then we activate you again for you to uh, realize your activities, and then you're deactivated again once we reach the pre preparation week. This is to, to avoid that there is um, some access to the system and uh, other things that could compromise the activities. So this is a change compared to what was there before. Uh, and I think most importantly than that is the, that for the migration weekend, uh, the NCB can request their counterparties to access the ECMS and uh, run some tests. I mean, we call it tests, but not, not tests because it's in prod. So it's some checks, I think, would be most appropriately word for this. So they might request these of you. And, uh, this was already foreseen somehow, but we didn't have a specific window in the schedule. So now we have a specific window in the schedule at the end of the migration activities uh, so that uh, this is uh, known by everyone, uh, the timing at which this could be expected. Uh, but then again, this is to be decided by the NCB at national level, how they want to do it. Uh, so you would uh, hear these requests from your NCBs directly. So this is, available it's a possibility but it's then depending on uh, each ncb okay so this is uh this is uh what where we are and the changes that we uh that not really changes but a bit of updates that were important for you to know uh regarding the next steps where are we going next is the pre-migration as i mentioned so we will start the pre-migration on the 5th of august and the phase lasts until the 20th of September. Uh, so the first or the pre-migration, as I mentioned, includes these steps three, four and five. Uh, basically, it's all the creation of the reference data. Uh, and it's mostly an NCB and ECMS operator activity. What it will uh, encompass is the creation of the parameters of the system, the setup of uh, the counterparty reference data, the rest of it that comes with the registration form, like the addresses or contact information. Uh, it will also include the creation of the accounts and the pools um, and all of these activities, but this is all done by the ECMS operator and the NCB. And then the step five, we would say, is more the one related to the counterparties. It's the setup of the counterparty uh, own data, like the remaining users or the registration form data verification. And this activity is expected to start on the 26th of August, but again, upon green light of the NCB. So we have a schedule. The schedule reflects that this should start on the 26th. But of course, if we face some issues um, during the setup of the other data, it could be that this is uh, slightly delayed. So that's why we have this uh, green light um, system here in place, but the activity is still expected to be uh, starting on the 26th of August. I think on the next slide, we have a bit more of uh, details for uh, how this step five goes. So what we want, so this will be after the capture of the counterparty registration form data and other data by the NCB, as I explained. So the NCB will do all of these in advance. And then um, it's when the counterparties are requested to uh, access the ECMS and do their own activities. These activities are uh, all of the reference data that is under your scope, which is in this case, just the remaining users and the access rights of these users. Um, this is because, as you know, for the connectivity, the only users that were requested to be created were the counterparty admin user and the A2A users. All of the, your other users should be created only at the time of the pre-migration. So this is the time where you would do it from the 26th. You would do this activity and also verify that 
the data created by the NCB based on the registration form is correct. So you would have access to check all of the other data that was created to you as far as you have access, uh, as described in the ECMS user handbook for counterparties. Uh, then you can check and uh, make sure that you know uh, what was created, if it's correct. If you have anything that you have doubts on, you should contact your uh, national service desk and uh, and ask them uh, or uh, point out that uh, something was created incorrectly. Uh, as mentioned, the planning. This is upon green light of the NCBs and it's expected to be from the 26th of August to the 6th of September. Um, and that's when you should execute these activities. So please keep that those dates in mind, those per that period of time in mind. Um, the first level of support is, of course, your uh, national service desk and uh, the documents you should be using to guide you through these activities. You have the U2A and A2A roles uh, for the ECMS, which is published on the ECB website. Also, the ECMS user handbook for counterparties, also published on the ECB website. And then there is this ECMS migration document for counterparties. This you will receive via your NCB um that describes uh, the activities into into more detail and uh, also preconditions and other other things like that okay so for the next uh, migration uh, tests uh, so up to now we were discussing prods but the migration tests we hope uh, to do are uh, mimicking what we want to do in prod uh, that's what we want to test so in this case, the next test that we will have uh, in new tests, we have three more tests, uh, one of them optional. Uh, they are all focusing on the preparation week and the migration week and dress rehearsals uh, or migration week and rehearsal. In this case, there is no specific activity for the counterparties during these two periods, the preparation week and the migration weekend, um, so unless the, your NCB, as we mentioned in the beginning, requests you to, at the end of the migration activities, to access ECMS and perform some checks. So in that case, uh, only in that case, you would be involved in the actual activities of the migration tests. Um, test nine is the one ongoing. Uh, as Bobby mentioned, we just finished the pre-migration rehearsal. We are now in the preparation week. Uh, and the migration weekend uh, starts uh, on the 28th of June and goes until the 30th of June. If the counterparties are to be involved is when we finish the activities, so Sunday the 30th of June. This is because all of the tests we will have now in new tests are dress rehearsals, which means that we are executing the activities exactly as in prod or as, as much as possible as in prod, including the fact that it's on a weekend, same as we will have in production. Uh, I take the chance here to, because I saw this comment in, or this question in the chat, uh, regarding the data that will be used in the migration tests, uh, the transactional data that the NCBs will migrate. Uh, as it is a, a dress rehearsal, the objective is that we migrate as much as possible prod-like data. Prod-like data means data in volume uh, matching the volume that we'll have in prod, but also the same type of data. This doesn't mean necessarily that is the data currently in the production uh, systems of your NCBs. So it's not necessarily the same. Uh, and specifically for the case of marketable asset positions, it can be that uh, due to some restrictions, uh, it might not be possible to execute it in uh, even in production like volumes. Uh, so this is a specific case, but it will in the end be up to your NCB to choose which data they will migrate, if they will do an exact copy of their production environment, or if they will just, uh, as I mentioned, uh, migrate something that is prod-like in the sense of the volume and the type, but not exactly the same as in prod. So this is all up to your NCB. They should inform you uh, of their option. Um, and uh, because then ex specifically, I think for the case of marketable assets, it's important for you to know which assets are available for you to, uh, let's say, use during your testing activities in the CTP2E phase. So this is to reply to that question we had in the chat. Um, and then, so returning to the test, we have test nine. It's ongoing now. We have the migration weekend, uh, not this weekend, but the next. And then we will have test 11 in September. And if necessary, there is the option to trigger test 12. 
um, in October. As you can see, it would even be after the go no go decision date planned. So it needs also to be thought of it, uh, but it's an optional test. So hopefully we do not have to trigger it, but it's there in case uh, of need, it's already planned. Okay, so I think we can go to the next one. Uh, here it's much of what I said, uh, but one part that is important is even though you do not have any specific activity unless, as I mentioned, your NCB requests you to do some checks on the Sunday uh, of the migration weekend, um, there is the NCBs will be migrating the transactional data, including the credit claims. So for those of you that use credit claims, you currently have an ID to your credit claim. Uh, it can be from your internal system or from your NCB uh, system. Uh, once these are uh, created in ECMS, uh, same as after the go live, when you register a new credit claim, the ECMS will attribute uh, an ID to this credit claim. This will happen also in the migration. So once your NCB migrates this credit claim, the ECMS will attribute uh, a reference to this to this credit claim. So your NCB uh, in prod, and this is what will happen in the test as well, uh, will need to communicate to you this new ID. So there is, it's an activity on the NCB side, but uh, it's important for you to know that this is foreseen. Uh, it's foreseen uh, these activities on the preparation week. Uh, so that uh, there is some time and it's not expected on the weekend only that you have these corrections. There is also uh, some, uh, there could be in place some periods, uh, kind of like an early cutoff for registration of uh, credit claims or even for uh, even mobilization of new marketable assets. This is just to avoid that we have, you know, uh, new credit claims to register quite quite close to the migration weekend because then the ID could only be provided to you then, but this will all be um, specified uh, in the documentation. Um, I think the next version of the ECMS migration document for counterparties includes this, but some of these cutoffs are also uh, applied at national level. Anyways, the relevant parties, your NCB will provide you this new ID. Uh, and that's important for you to know. It's how it will happen in prod. And of course, we will re rehearse it as much as uh, feasible in the migration rehearsals as well. Uh, the last slide, I think it's uh, still on the counterparty. So it's. Uh, I think this is a reminder we also had in the last session. Even though you are or might not be directly involved in the test, it's still of extreme importance that you respect uh, that uh, a migration test is being executed. Um, so here we would say that if you are participating participating in the test, please only, and even in the production phases, please do only the activities that are uh, requested to you and execute them at the time that they are uh, requested. Um, this is really important that you don't start doing other things that are not requested because this could have um, some uh, unwanted uh, disruptions or effects on the test or the production activities. And uh, this, I think, caters more for the test, but please respect the, the environment availability. Uh, don't try to do other tests that uh, are not migration test, uh, tasks or, uh, or activities uh, while there is a migration test ongoing. Um, I think now that we have this deactivation of users, this is a bit um, somehow we hope that is uh, not going to happen so easily, but still, if if we are within a phase where you do have access to the system and you are participating in the migration phase, do just the activities requested. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I don't. I I could not see all of the questions in the chat, but I think I will. Uh, yeah, so quickly. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, and Isa, I will thank you so much. I will give you, you know, 30 second break <laughs> and to look at all the questions. So thanks everyone for shooting very detailed questions, lots of questions in here. But I'd like to bring back um Audrin, maybe um because um we had a few questions for you. So if we could get you back, there you are. Excellent. So there was a few questions for you on credit claims and for Ike. Do you want to pick up on some of those, please? Yes, exactly. So we got a question asking about when uh, will the ECMS catalog of messages and credit claim files be available? So looking at the catalog of messages, we are currently doing a, a final uh, review. We do expect that uh, this will be fine in the beginning of July. We will publish it, so there should not be big change compared to what has been published so far. 
regarding the credit claim file. So we are currently uh, planning a new XSD. Sorry for that, but uh, with the testing activities ongoing, the NCB have identified few fields for which we need to do some adjustments. So these are just fields, like only few, maybe two or three where we need maybe the pattern to be adjusted or the length to just be uh, adjusted as well. So this is something we would like uh, to publish also beginning of uh, of July, still giving you enough time to to adapt uh, to to not disturb the, the test for in July. Then the other question related to uh, the four eyes. I think some, uh, someone mentioned that uh, today for CLM they do it in CRDM. For the CMS, the setting has to be done in the CMS. This is why you have the access right uh, configuration, where then you can say if you use the two or four eyes uh, principle. So not use yes, do not use CRDM for CMS for eyes. This is directly in the ECMS to, to do this configuration. Great, thank you, Audrin. Uh, super. Um, so I'll let you go a little bit, and then um, maybe Bamini, could I bring you back? Because we had a few questions um, on a number of things here for you to pick up. But for instance, the NCB contact. Uh, so what happens directly before the 1st of July? So we have a few of those. I think you mentioned it, but maybe you want to reiterate a bit here. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, um, uh, Ellen. So basically for the communication, so from the 1st of July, so the current plan is the testing will, uh, the functional testing will start on the 1st of July. Yeah. Uh, if, nevertheless, in case uh, if there are uh, any um, uh, pending activities from the weekend or from any or issues that have been identified from the uh, migration weekend rest rehearsal, uh, uh, communication uh, highlighting all these uh, uh, points, yeah, will be um, yeah uh, sent out yeah via the NCBs uh, to all the. Uh, users yeah but currently there is nothing planned but of course uh, like uh, for all the other target services if if there is a definitely a need for such a communication we will uh, uh, go for it and provide such a communication but uh, right now the testing will start um, as planned uh, on the 1st of july so that's the main communication now we want to share that's on the communication uh, and the 1st of july deadline and then the second point uh, what i uh, what i can also take us on the volume test i see um, uh, uh, there was a question where uh, the planning uh, that, that they plan to do the testing from the 1st July to 18th of July, uh, the volume testing, but uh, here we actually recommend uh, the dates, what you saw in the slides, uh, it was basically from the 18th July until 19th of uh, 16th of August. This is the time that we uh, recommend to do volume testing. Why? Because um, the window before and the window after, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, we will apply um, uh, the live timing schedule. It's just so we don't affect the testing during the live timing schedule. We recommend to do the volume testing uh, yeah, uh, in, in this uh, four weeks window uh, between these two live timing schedule. That's the recommendation. Yeah, but, uh, and, and hence, hence we would request you to uh, align to this uh, window your volume testing uh, expectation. But uh, please also share uh, the volume and the related data. Uh, then, then we can also uh, assess from the ECMS perspective uh, and then can also come back to you via the NCB codes. Okay, so that's on the volume testing. And also there was another question, uh, whether uh, what will happen to the testing activities in between this uh, two live timing schedule window. So not no, no impact on the testing. It's just the schedule uh, will be uh, switched from the uh, live timing schedule to test environment schedule. So that's it. So that's the schedule will be changing, but the testing activities will be, uh, you, you can perform the testing yeah, without uh, any disruptions. You can, perform the testing from the 1st of July to 6th of September, you can do it without any description. It's just only these three uh, weeks, two slots of these three weeks, then we will apply live timing schedule. That's that's it. And the remaining time, we will apply uh, standard uh, schedule uh, uh, needed for the test environment. Yeah, so that's, uh, I think those. Uh, and then uh, testing of the four eyes. Uh, yes, yeah, to answer the question, yes, this can be uh, tested from the 1st of July. Yeah. I Thank you, Bamini. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so, Bobby, I think maybe there's a few that you want to pick up on as well. So it's very active in there now. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah, no, no, it's really, it's really excellent, Ellen. And also, you know, the the quality of the question shows that everyone is really uh, 
they're 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 deep in testing, so it's very good. One of the one of the questions was uh, the use of the four eyes. It depends on our settings, so on the counterparty settings or on the user settings. And this is true. Yeah, you can use the ECMS in two eyes, or you can use it in four eyes. You can you can configure it that way. Of course, your auditors will be looking for you to use it in four eyes, but um, it's of course up to yourselves. There was a question also about the volumes. Somebody said. Uh, you know, when they're testing their volumes to send to ECMS, what is a high volume? Is it a hundred? Is it a thousand? And the question here is really, the answer is really use your production volume, maybe add a little bit on top, and then that will give you a good, uh, you know, a, a good overview of your ability to receive production like volumes from the ECMS. The ECMS will be ready, configured to take these volumes from you. You don't need to worry about that. But from your side, use your own business case. If you have 100 mobilizations a day or X amount a day or whatever it is, if you want to send a thousand messages, if that's your business case normally, then maybe send 1,100, 1,200, whatever, you know, in order to ensure that you can integrate the, the amount of messages coming back. Yeah, so this is really an important one. So then I think what we need to say is uh, what's very important. Uh, somebody also spoke about the period where the counterparties are disconnected. This is in production. While we do the pre-migration in production, there will be a disconnection period. We want you to make sure to concentrate on your production connectivity now. Please concentrate on this now. Please get yourself connected to production as soon as you possibly can. Liaise with your service desk, liaise with your uh, network service provider. This is important, yeah? Then, uh, in the test environment, you will be continuously connected. You can continuously test. As we said, you'll be able to test all the way up to the go-live date with certain restrictions that will be in the testing conditions document, yeah? And please liaise with your NCB, stay close to your national central bank and liaise with them. And uh, good luck to everyone. Thanks a lot, everybody. Super. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, now, Anita, you've had a few minutes. <laughs> um, there's a few questions for you, so maybe we bring you back uh, to answer a few of those. Thanks. Thank you, Aline. So, indeed, I think now I collected all of the questions. Uh, thank you for the colleagues also for supporting. So, I, one of the questions we had was, um, does the activation of counterparty users, A2A and U2A, during the pre-migration phase, uh, if it's related to the phase of the 5th of August to the 22nd of, uh, uh, sorry, 22nd, 22nd of September. Indeed, the deactivation of the users in production uh, will be for the pre-migration phase, the first time. So that will be from the 5th of August to the 26th of August. On the 26th of August, we reactivate the users in the, the counterparty users in the production environment. This means A2A and U2A users, so that you can uh, execute your pre-migration activities, which are the ones we explain, the creation of your remaining users, and uh, validating that the reference data created by the NCB is uh, the correct one. Okay, so I think that answers two of the questions we had. Uh, it's also related to the question I think Bobby answered that uh, the deactivation during the pre-migration is in production. So this does not affect your tests ongoing in the user testing environment. Um, and uh, during the user testing, you will only be deactivated during the migration tests. So the de now, this, now currently, this week and the next, you are deactivated as expected. And then already during the test 11, uh, which you already had as a phase where you could not test, uh, the one in September. Okay, so replying to that one. Um, to clarify on the connectivity phase, the connectivity phase uh, as a phase finishes today. That doesn't change. However, of course, if you have not yet uh, successfully tested your connectivity, you should keep on trying. The environment in production is available and you should keep on trying to establish your connectivity. Uh, and here we are raising awareness is that from the 5th of August onwards, there is no possibility to test this. So you should as soon as possible test this uh, and, and try to get this because also if you face issues, then there is a limited timing for correction of any issues. So that's why we are uh, pushing for you to test as soon as you can. Uh, and and, uh, and that's, that's the case. So it's still, it's still possible to test it 
if you have not done it, but please do it as soon as possible. And this also connects that someone asked if uh, both the A2A and the U2A users uh, could be set up in prod from the 26th of August. So the answer is your A2A users should actually have been set up already right now. Uh, in this phase we are, uh, that, that is finishing today, the connectivity, uh, so that you can test your connectivity. So in case you have not set up your A2A users, please do so uh, as soon as you can, and please test it as soon as you can, the connectivity for these users in the production environment. Uh, the U2A users, you are expected to set them up only in the pre-migration phase and so this means from the 26th of august onwards so eight way users now if you have not done it the u2a users of your counterparty should be set up only from the 26th of august onwards uh it, for production of course um and then there is a question uh when is the migration for production planned so the different phases, uh, we will go through that. The connectivity phase in production finishes today. The pre-migration phase, which refers to the migration of reference data, starts on the second, oh, sorry, on the 5th of August and is ongoing until the 20th of September. The preparation week phase starts on the 4th of November and is ongoing until um, the 15th of November. And the migration weekend is, of course, starting 15th of November, end of day until uh, the 70, or let's put it like this, uh, 18th of November, actually to, to the actual go live. So the weekend before the go live. Okay, I think those were the questions from my so, side. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so you. very good here. Thank you. I think we're, we're getting close to the questions answering uh, the main thing to remember, like Bobby said a few times, your national service desk is a is a big hit. So also contact them on some of these very specific questions. They're super good. Some of them are maybe also addressed to them. Maybe we just want a uh, quickly order. And do you just want to pick up on uh, one question in there before we close? Yes. Up? I Go think ahead. I can I can do I can do do some so it's a follow up from what I I just said previously. So regarding the usage of four eyes, it depends exactly in the setting you do in the CMS. So in the CMS, in the access rights setup, either the user can be a super validator role or just a validator role for the four eyes mode. So this is really something you do in the CMS. Uh, there was a question about the publication date for the X, XSD file for credit claims. We plan to do it beginning of July. I cannot yet give the exact date, uh, but we will ensure proper communication. We are still uh, reviewing the XSD as we got uh, an incident last week. So we still have to fine tune. This is also the reason of uh, doing some testing is that then you, you may have to, to, to adapt. And so uh, there was some question about what will be changed, uh, what we will change in the XSD. So here I can give a bit some insight for those who can understand it. So currently the probability of default was only six digits. We will go now up to seven digits. There is a, a pattern that we have to update for the credit claim reference, instruction ID, message ID, uh, and credit claim uh, number. Uh, just to avoid that you use characters which are not allowed, it, like double quote and so on. So these are kind of uh, things which are um, to be avoided. Nothing fancy uh, from the CMS. It's just that we need to update the pattern, as uh, we have seen in testing that uh, some users already uh, tried to, to do this kind of non-positive test case. And last but not least, uh, the length of the message ID. So far, this is 40 characters for zero, and we will reduce it to 35 just to ensure that the admin 007 will be correctly generated and sent to you in case of uh, rejection. So these are the current uh, changes we, we have uh, for, the, for the new XSD for, for credit claim. But I think there are other questions, so back to you, to you Ellen. Yes, yeah, super. Thank you. I think we're getting close. <laughs> it's it's good to see. It's good to see everyone's very active here. It it means that uh, you're really uh, deep uh, deep into this. So um, so good to see. And thanks for all the questions. 